Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's Charles and I wanted to do kind of a mini review, so to speak, of a very inexpensive generator interlock kit. It's this little guy right here. It's all it is. It's just a little up and down slide, just like so. Um, I don't have the instructions with me, but basically everything is printed on this page here. So this is the order from Amazon. This is about $36. Now there's a wide variety of different kinds. There's a website called, uh, I think it's interlockkit.com that has something like nine pages of different style interlock kits for different breakers, different boxes, different setups, and so forth. Now in my case, my generator setup that I just put in over the weekend, uh, or I guess it was uh, Sunday because we were expecting a pretty big storm. Luckily we didn't lose power, but it does mean I spent a lot of money for nothing, but better safe than sorry, right? Well, either way, we need an interlock kit. So let me go through the quick and basics of what this is for, and then why this has a very, very potentially fatal flaw. So the biggest thing for an interlock kit, the biggest uh, reason to have one, is it prevents backfeeding your electricity from your generator through the circuit and into the utility company lines without any safeguards. So if your power goes out, you know, all your breakers are still on, but your power goes out and you turn your generator on and it starts feeding electricity into your panel, there would be nothing to stop that electricity from then traveling backwards through the network, through the lines, and if somebody is working on the lines up the road, well, they're going to feel it. And that's obviously a very, very big safety risk. The idea being that either your main breaker is turned on from your utility company, providing service as normal, or the generator is on, but not both. The purpose of the interlock kit is simply to prevent both the generator and your main from being active at any given time simultaneously. Now, that is kind of the key that I want to talk about real quick with this one. Now, when I mention that there is a fatal flaw with this product, it's not the product itself, it's the documentation that comes with it. So I want to just quick run over and show you on this breaker panel more or less how this works. And then we'll come back and we'll look at why the documentation on this is probably going to get somebody killed. Now behind me, this is my breaker for out here in my shed. Um, I want to stress that this style is not the style that this panel would actually use, but I'm going to use it as a demonstration real quick uh, since I'm not in my house and it's very noisy in there. We're going to pretend that this does not exist, right? This is a, this is the mains here, but we're going to pretend that this does not exist. My house panel, however, is exactly like this. Just two rows of breakers. The top one over here is a double pole 100 amp uh, feeder breaker. This is my main breaker in the house. And then right below it is where my generator breaker is. So I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to put you a little closer and I'll show you how this is supposed to work. And then we're going to go show you the pictures. The way this works is we would take this panel off. These two are just screws that come in and out. All right. So that's just kind of, that's what gives you this slide action. And what you would do, again, we're going to pretend that this is my double pole main breaker, and then this is my generator breaker. The idea being that you line this up and you make your marks and you drill this in the right spot. So for example, right here, if we were to have this mounted right there, you can see we can turn the main breaker on, but not the generator. The generator line cannot be pushed on. If we want to turn the generator on, we would have to turn the main off first, slide this up out of the way, and then we can turn our generator on. Turn generator off, slide this down, now we can turn the main on. That is how this is supposed to work. And that is so you cannot have both of these on at any given point in time. I want to stress that you cannot have both of these on at any given point in time. Main or generator, one at a time, but not both. They can both be off but you cannot have them both on at the same time, one or the other. That is how this product works. I do want to also mention that while I'm right here, they also do include some zip ties in that you can zip tie your breakers within the panel together, your generator breaker and whatever breaker is on the other side so that it can't just accidentally get pulled out without somebody realizing that they give you safety stickers. We'll go over that in a little bit, but there are zip ties in there to do exactly that. I'm going to turn all my circuits back on here since we're done here playing in the shed. Let's go talk a little bit. 
So I want to show you this picture. This is the same picture that they have on their website. It's the same picture that they have on their instruction sheet that comes with it. Uh, and they have another picture that's basically the same thing. It has a caption that says, main breaker on, generator cannot be turned on. Well, here's the problem. We're going to look at this picture. Now, this top picture is representative of a 200 amp breaker, so you've got two double here. Um, so we can ignore this. This bar here is your main breaker bar and they're connected to them. So whatever happens on this breaker is happening up here too. We can just ignore this for the sake of argument. Generator breaker, main breaker. It's that simple. But look at this picture. Right now we show the generator breaker is in the on position, but there is nothing preventing us from turning on the main breaker at the same time as the generator. Now, in this situation, yes, one is off, one is on, that's how it should be, but this is not right. This needs to be on the other side, over here, to keep one or the other from being turned on at the same time as the other one. This picture is completely wrong, and it is literally a potential deadly situation. There is nothing to prevent somebody from turning the main breaker on right now. So let's use this as an example. Let's say, for example, the power is out, you've got your generator turned on, right? Your switch is on, maybe it's out in your garage or wherever, and it's fired up and running. And maybe somebody else in the household goes, I wonder if the power is back on. They come in here, there's nothing to stop them from just flipping that main switch. Now, if there's a lineman working up the road, by switching that on while the generator breaker is on, and again, nothing prevents it per this picture, you've just fed all of that juice from that generator right through the lines up and... Yeah, uh, I can guarantee you, if they find out that that was you, you're paying the funeral expenses and then some, because that is, again, it is literally potentially deadly. And this is so wrong of a picture. If all they had done was take this and put it on this side, or, or, if these labels were switched around, so this was on and off, totally fine. But that picture is labeled wrong or drawn wrong or however you want to say it. It's wrong on the Amazon listing. It's been questioned by multiple people on the listing and mentioned out in the reviews. It's not been updated, not been changed. And the printed material that still comes with the kit is still wrong. So that is the biggest issue I have with this product. It's 36 bucks, which is fine. It's two pieces of aluminum stuck together with a couple of screws uh, and so, it doesn't have to do much. There's not like a lot of force being used in a breaker panel um, moving side to side. The other thing I would say with these is these are security nuts on the end of these things. You can see they're basically a big flathead, but as this sleeved nut, right, you can see it right here, as this slides into here and tightens up, like right now I could put a flathead screwdriver on there and be fine. But as this tightens up, you can see that the screw comes into the center and that's basically going to kick off your flathead screwdriver. Now you do have to account for the fact that these screws on the back are going to go through uh, a little piece of stamped steel for your breaker panel. But it's not so far that it's going to actually uh, help out with that. But um, yeah, tightening these down is going to be a little bit tricky. And here's the other thing with these, they're not lock nuts by any means. So look at this bottom nut right here, right? If I just do this, you can see it turning. Now, obviously, in a breaker panel, that's not going to be happening, and you're not doing that unless you're getting an earthquake, but, I mean, it literally is unscrewing itself the entire time. There should be either a nylon insert into these things or a better way to do it. Again, this is so much cheaper than a lot of the kits out there, so I kind of see that they've cut corners on stuff like that. And my solution, honestly, is I'm going to get this into place, and I'm just going to hot glue the end of that uh, with a hot glue gun. Okay, so I want to talk real quick about the stickers and the zip ties real quick before we get into the rest of this. So they give you a bunch of stickers. So here's one page of the stickers that they give you. And this one here is the one that goes with the zip ties that I was talking about. So let me pull up a picture. I finally found a picture on another site that shows exactly what those zip ties are meant to do. Because in the instructions, it just says zip tie the top of the breakers together. Like it says nothing. It's horrible. So let me pull up a picture that shows this a little bit better. So you might not be able to see it, but you can kind of tell, right? So this picture here, you can see right here, this is a zip tie, right? Goes around the breaker, same here. 
a pair of zip ties that go around. And basically you would take your, wherever your generator breaker is, and then the next one on the other side of the, the box, and you zip tie them together. Now the zip ties have to be thin enough, so that way you can get more breakers alongside it, otherwise you're wasting an entire spot and that's dangerous. But I do believe that there are codes in a lot of areas that also require that a main feeder branch in, be it your main breaker or a generator feeding power into the box, something bringing power into the box needs to be secured. Now a lot of boxes have a main breaker that actually has a, a screw in it to hold it into place so it can't come out. My house is like that. Um, other ones have it in a way where you just can't get to it uh, or they've locked in one way or the other. In this case, they're using the zip ties to make it so that way, if you wanted to pull this out, you have to cut the zip ties first to give yourself the flexibility to do so. The thought process being that if you knowingly need to move this out, you will also have to knowingly cut the zip tie knowing what you're doing. So here's the sticker that goes with the zip ties. I'm going to turn around and read this. I'm going to read it exactly as written, and then we can both laugh together. Do not remove generator breaker retaining strap. If breaker needs to be removed after installation, Press release tab on strap and reinstall when complete. So two things about that. Um, sentence structure, one. Um, it's a zip tie. But if you want to call it a retaining strap, feel free. How many of you have ever tried to undo a zip tie? Not cut it, but physically unzip the zip tie. Yeah, press, re press release tab on strap. That ain't happening. It, First off, it's a zip tie. Cut the stupid thing off and buy a new one. But uh, yeah, so anyway, that sticker is meant to be wrapped around the zip ties after you've put them inside your box. And again, they go inside before you put your cover panel on. Um, they also give you a little one here for the breaker itself. It just says generator breaker warning. Breaker cannot be on if panel cover is removed. Well, if the panel cover is removed, this thing goes away because it's on the cover. Uh, there's nothing that says you can't do it, other than a sticker saying, don't do it. But it doesn't say, do not turn breaker on if panel cover is removed. This says it can't happen. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 it can. Uh, and then down here is just kind of a, just a startup thing. So it's basically just saying, you know, hey, if you need to use your interlock kit and your generator, here's some steps, you know, turn off all your hydrant appliances, you know, do yada, yada, yada. Uh, and then again, here is the picture that shows you how to use this thing, and this is so wrong. How to use, turn up. I'm assuming that this means um, how to turn on your main breaker after you've used your generator. Main breaker on. Okay, we've, we've turned our main breaker on, did that. Generator breaker is off. Okay, yep, it's off so far and generator cannot be turned on. And as you can see, there's nothing stopping us. Same thing over here, generator breaker on, main breaker off, and main breaker cannot be turned on. Again, completely wrong the way that these pictures are. All right, so to wrap it up, I mean, the kit itself is very simple, very basic, and relatively inexpensive. They're inexpensive enough that you know, if you're putting a generator in, spend the 35, 40 bucks, whatever it is, and you don't have to spend the hundreds of dollars unless you've got a really complicated box set up, but even something simple like this, where it's 35, 40 bucks, um, it's definitely worth having it. Don't, even if you think you're the only one that's gonna ever touch the box, it's still, it's stupid to not have that extra level of security and safety. It might not be you that gets zapped, but it's gonna save you a lot of headache down the road if you put one of these in. And you put it in the right way and don't listen to these idiots with their stupid drawings that are completely bass backwards and wrong. So physically, the kit's fine. I just wish the lock nuts were actually lock nuts. Um, but I mean, anybody that can turn a screwdriver can put one of these things in, that's totally fine. So the physical part, I don't have a problem with that. That part I do. So do not look at the pictures use some common sense, look at other installations, look at the people that have actually installed it, and just remember, at the end of the day, the point of this is so you cannot turn both breakers on at the same time. Install this to make sure that you cannot turn them both on. We don't care about turning them off at the same time. They need to be prevented from being turned on. So that's pretty much it. That's kind of the overview of this thing. 
Now I know it's kind of a little bit of a rambly video and a talking heads video, but, uh, but after getting it in and realizing this massive glaring mistake in their documentation, uh, I wanted to at least put that out there specific to this product. There are a lot of other products very similar. I don't know if they use the same crap, but if they do, ignore it, use some common sense, make sure you're blocking the onward side of the breakers. So I'm gonna end my rant now. Be safe and uh, thanks for watching.